Hi, uh, I'm back. D welcome back, me. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome back for the first time of a break in a long time, me. <laughs> While I was away, a lot of things happened. I went to the Conjuring house, which is the video I'm going to be talking about today. And I'm going to give you all all of the spooky behind the scenes and show you guys never before seen footage from the video. Talk about all the creepy things that happened. I've never taken this big a break off of YouTube. Uh, I Technically, it wasn't really a break. I was still recording with the boys, but I took two weeks off to go get married and go to my honeymoon, which I've never done that before. And yeah. Yeah, what else happened? Um, only the biggest, most important release. We're now at all Spencer stores in America. You can get yourself the exclusive Boys uh, Spencer's collaboration at any local Spencer stores. That's right, we hit retail. There's hoodies, shirts, socks, stickers, pins, and it couldn't have happened without all of your support. So thank you for that. Uh, go check out this, your local Spencer store and see if you can find anything. Send me pictures on Instagram, tag me. Or if you can't go to the store in person for whatever reason, you can buy it online going to the link in the description and get yourself this shirt or this shirt or this shirt or this hoodie buy our stuff from here yes i mean i'll just oh oh <laughs> hey ah, i got you I, I, you thought uh, you thought you thought i can't smack out with a chancla on the first video back oh yeah and before you ask the wedding was filmed it's in the works the video's in the works i know you guys want to see it i know it's and it's going to turn out pretty awesome but it's going to take some time so be patient okay but that's enough catch up let's uh, talk about the conjuring house here we go now like i did with the asylum explanation video i'm not going to be watching and showing all of the boys video because you have to go and watch it on the channel what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about the experience there and kind of expand on events that happen and show you guys some behind the scenes stuff okay so right at the start i have to note that this part of the house as we're walking by it this whole front section right here this is an extension that was built for the groundskeeper and the tour guides that stay there and tour the house for people so we don't have access to this area actually half of it is a merch shop and the only reason i'm telling you this right now is because it'll be relevant later when i show you some behind the scenes stuff about some stuff we heard and how it couldn't have possibly come from there but it it'll be relevant later we're locked in <laughs> this is okay so as soon as you enter this place you feel like the air is extremely dense it smells old any step you take creaks the floorboards. The house was built in the 1600s, so and it's still holding up. It's one of the oldest houses still standing in the whole country. And uh, they purposefully have like very dim lights and like one source of light per room. So it, it really adds to the creepy factor if you're staying there. The first thing the tour guide told us is that obviously the events from the movie are way more exaggerated than what actually happened. That's not to say that some creepy stuff hasn't happened in that house, but a lot of the stuff in the movie was exaggerated. He did say the house is very haunted, which, you know, depending on what you believe, what we experienced that night was, in my opinion, pretty evident. And I tend to debunk a lot of shit, muchachos. This house? I couldn't f***ing explain. Now, the best way I can compare this to kind of paint the picture of what I'm talking about here. When we went to the asylum and, when, and I stepped into the asylum, the air felt so oppressive. It almost felt like I wanted to throw up. And it was probably all the energy, all the lingering energy from ev everyone that suffered and died there. The tens of thousands of people that died there. There wasn't those deaths here in this house. The energy in the house felt more creepy and scary. I don't know how to describe it, but what's really weird is that as soon as I entered the house, I really had to use the restroom. And we made jokes about it, but I actually pooped blood. And my stomach had been fine all day. I didn't eat anything weird. So it was my first sign that uh, something wasn't right in this place. Yeah, how are you? Okay, so we had the great idea of bringing night vision cameras and obviously you guys get to see the, the footage, but anytime the footage is green, what we actually see is completely pitch black. Think exactly like Outlast. Yes, I did just pick my nose before you type in the comments. It was itchy. I only say that because a lot of people were like, oh, well, they can see each other and this and that and look at the way their eyes look and, and it's pitch black. 
our eyes are dilated, you can tell because there's no light. And this will be even more relevant later when we do the when we start talking to the actual spirits. Oh. Warning, positively do not open. So I'll get this out of the way now. The only fake thing in this entire video was Mully carrying the doll. Because the doll that Mully grabs is not the one from the cage. He grabbed one that was upstairs. But to anyone saying this is fake, I'm gonna explain to you and I'm gonna show you none of the stuff we did was fake. I know you have a thing for dolls. Oh. More evidence that it's pitch Please black? Look at me and say you're not Mully tripping. <laughs> Some shit did happen here. Worst things have happened. In Eddie's pants. I took a shit earlier and there was blood. Yeah, that's... <laughs> there, you know, yeah, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> we do have to say, this is not the Annabelle doll. And that's, that's not the actual Black & Decker air conditioner either. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, that actually is not the real Annabelle doll. While the Annabelle doll is actually a Raggedy Ann doll, like the one that's in there, the real one is kept at the museum that Ed and Lorraine Warren have. So, that one there's just for effect. Also, there was literally money everywhere. Like, people just left offerings. There was a bunch of little offering trays, like, on windowsills. There's some money, like, on the handle where the doll is. I didn't realize how big of an attraction this house was until I went there. Be, be real. Can anyone, can everyone, like, feel a change yeah. in the air? In yeah. The, if the atmosphere feels heavy, but that just might be the subway I ate before. So, I think we explained this in the video, but when we got the tour, the guide told us, he said the, the room with the most activity is Henry's room on the, th the second floor then underneath it, the library, then the basement, which are all three like stacked on top of each other. For some reason, he said that that was the place with the most activity, which is the reason why we use the spirit box in all three of those places. And those were our three main targets because of what the tour guide said, which turned out to be pretty true. The tour guide said, I don't really know why, but it seems like the energy is going up in a pillar. And I just, re that just realized what <laughs> sus. All right. <laughs> There's a column here no, of the cool. most activity. Yes, oh, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, Juicy just said it. Yep, we did explain that. I think if we all jump in that corner, we can literally knock this place over. Oh. So uh, behind this wall here where the uh, fireplace is, this is where the merch shop is. And behind that is the living quarters for the uh, guy that stays there. Uh, he says he himself has spotted and multiple people have also spotted a lady in a dress standing in this corner right here which we did not get to see but any time throughout the night where i would walk through this living room i would like i would be so scared to look towards this corner bro i was shitting my pants just knowing that there could be some bitch right there ah uh, i got chicken skin just now thinking about it <laughs> josh open the door this is not funny Okay, so this is the part where Josh gets put in the little closet and he stays there for a while. And I'm going to show y'all. This is the first of the behind the scenes footage I'm going to show y'all. Because narrator was being a total menace this night. Okay, so we were waiting for a while. I mean, we were there for like 15. Josh was in there for like 15 plus minutes. Like, Juicy was waiting for him to come out so that he could scare him. And he waited there for so long. Okay, you also got to remember now, it's pitch black. And the only thing we can see is through the cameras because they're night vision. So if you look over, I have a camera and I'm seeing Juicy on night vision from my perspective. And if you look to the right, there's this motherfucker over here getting ready to pounce at me and scare me. I can't see anything to my left because it's black. Everything is black. And if we switch over to my POV, this is what's happening. The amount of money we're going to make for members is going to be retirement money if Josh dies right now. <laughs> <laughs> we had been waiting for so long for Josh to come out and Molly said that. That's f***ing funny. That's an IR blaster from that camera. Mm. Yeah. So it's invisible to the naked eye, but you can see it with the night shot. Here, have a look. There we go. That's what it looks like. I'm showing like you right what I can what, yeah, what it looks like there. It's pitch black. You know they could have just cut the video file to get the same effect, right? Night Got shut it. up, bro. They could have. It would have been black if they just cut the video out. But yeah, just to give you some context of what we were seeing. And then... Yeah, just allergies. Oh, oh f*** me! <laughs> oh! <laughs> you piece of oh, shit! Oh, man, you got him. He just shit oh, blood. Oh, my he just, God. He just shit blood. Shut the f*** up. Shut up. Shut up.
That was funny, man. Oh god, that was fing funny, dude. I fing hate you, bro. I hate you. That was so good. Oh, that scared the shit out of me. That was funny. Oh my god, dude, my heart. Imagine, imagine just like sitting there in the dark and we've been waiting for a while for Josh to come out and it's like quiet for a little bit. And then I just hear next to my ear, to tell you I almost died, I almost died. That was, that was scary. Narrator was being a menace, but it was very funny. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to this part that you guys uh, shared. You guys said you saw something here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, he was oh just a big God, menace bro. right there. Did you see it? Let's play that in slow motion. You can see that there's something behind narrator. I'll play that at half oh speed. Do you see that behind God. him? Right there, that thing back there. My <laughs> God, bro. Now, I was trying to wrap my head around that because we were all upstairs. So either I'm not remembering right or there was something behind him. I'm hoping it was somebody standing behind him trying to come up the stairs. Maybe it was one of the girls because none of us have hair like that, but I'm pretty sure we were all upstairs. I hope it was one of the girls. <laughs> so before we get into the talking to spirits and what happened there, there's one more thing I want to add for context here because this wasn't in the video and I feel like I got to explain it to you guys. And I got to show you. So this is after what we give the tour of everything right before we're about to start at the library. We're hanging out in the kitchen. And since I've been seeing all of the offerings around the entire house, I thought it'd be a good idea for me to offer the spirits something. Anyway, this is raw footage unedited from that night. Check out this clip. Caramel and cheddar popcorn. Best combination. I'm gonna leave an offering, boys. I don't think they had these in the 1600s. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys should try this shit right here. It's busting. You talking to the ghosts or us? Yes. Yes. Between those things, juicy's vape. These ghosts are gonna love us, dude. Dude. I feel like if we feed one of these like 1800s ghosts a f***ing bang energy drink, the whole property will explode. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like the f***ing oh, demon core. I, that felt really cool. That felt good for me. It did. It felt like I was doing something nice for someone. I was like, okay, if there are spirits here tonight that are old as shit, they have to... My voice is cracked. <laughs> They have to try caramel and cheddar popcorn. So I left them one of the cheddars and one of the caramel. I wasn't trying to be funny. I was actually like genuinely wanted to do that. Oh, you're in a good place with the ghost now? Yeah, because no. that's f***ing... Everybody leaves them money. What are they going to do? Go to the dollar store and buy shit? Not they going to go to Walmart? My base has like a philanthropy ch channel where you like build villages for African people. Good charity is like... Leaving s'mores on a plate in the house. Your charity's giving a ghost a piece of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta be the, the most unique thing that's happened. Yeah, compared to anything Mr. Beast has done, that's cool. What I did was cool as shit. A piece of popcorn for the ghosts? Way better than curing a thousand blind kids. <laughs> but let's move on. So this is the part where we figure out that the people who went in the closet had full batteries for some reason. It's almost 1 a.m. Mm. How the f did it, is it almost 1 a.m.? How long were we doing the tour? The tour lasted two and a half hours. About two and a half, yeah. So us going around every room lasted for two and a half hours. Like, I can't remember that happening like that. Like, it felt like we were only messing around for like 30 minutes. That entire section of the video took two and a half hours to make. And one of the things that the tour guide warned us about, he said, time is weird here. Like, keep an eye on your clocks. And the tour part of the video and the basement part of the video were especially alarming for me because it didn't feel like we were there for that long. But we were. Two and a half hours. It went by like that. We were there from like 8 p.m. all the way to 6 a.m. And we stayed up through the entire night. So yeah, that night did not feel real. It was weird. So for all the skeptics out there that said we manipulated the video in some way, look, 
There's a cat ball right there behind Josh as we're talking, hanging out in the kitchen. And this is the raw footage, so this is not the edited version. Here we are figuring out that only the people who were in the closet were the ones with full battery, and then the cat ball goes off. And I want you to see it unedited. We, we all started with full battery. I, all... I gave you fresh one. I had a I fresh one. Fresh one. I didn't give you fresh ones. No, mine's full still. So, well, shit's working back. Hang on, hang on. Are the people that went in the wardrobe got full batteries? Is yours full? <laughs> Wait, what the f? Wait, what the f? Wait. Oh, oh! See that? Is that a yes? Are you f serious? <laughs> no. That thing didn't even move. I I went in the wardrobe too. Yo! Not, not so long, but I did go in Bro, the wardrobe. If that was a fucking yes from a ghost, I don't know what is. So that was that was the very first thing that happened that night. There was actual evidence of like some sort of communication happening because no one can touch that thing, and those things don't go off unless you move them physically. Wait, so all the people see who it's went off now. The wardrobe at some Something point moved full it. Batteries on their lives. Look at Kevin in the reflection. My man is pogging right now. <laughs> but okay, it's time to get to the real scary shit when we started talking to these ghosts. And so to explain the method that we used, it's called the Estes method. And I didn't know it was called the Estes <laughs> I didn't know it was called that before I went to the house. At first, I thought we were just going to communicate using the spirit box without the headphones. But Josh and Molly had done a video previously where they used the Estes, Estes method method, which essentially means that you use a spirit box with headphones and you deprive your senses of everything. So you're supposed to use a blindfold and the headphones so that you don't hear the people, you don't hear or see what's around you. All you hear and sense is whatever is coming through your ears through the spirit box. So the people in the spirit box are only repeating what they hear from the headphones. They have no idea what the people around them are doing or saying. So for the rest of us, we're asking questions that the person with the headphones can't hear. Which makes this method creepy as hell when you get an actual response to a question you asked. Because it's almost like you're not talking to the person with the headphones, you're talking to whatever is speaking through them. And if you don't know what a spirit box sounds like or what, you he what we were hearing in the headphones, essentially it sounds like this. Can you tell me your name? Steve. It's cycling through radio stations at very high speeds. So all you hear is that is is that static, and all of a sudden you can make out a word, a very clear word, or a voice that comes through out of nowhere and says something. And that's the stuff you're supposed to repeat. So if you guys remember when I put the headphones on, I said the flu or pain. That's the stuff I was hearing very clearly, like this person is hearing through the through the box with the speakers. Wow, that was really clear. Steve, did you die here? Murdered? You yeah, were murdered that, here? It's just like that. Like, it, it's it's random words or phrases. The thing about being the person with the headphones on, though, is that it sounds like gibberish to you. You're just saying random words like the flu and murdered. It's not until you come out of the headphones and you realize, holy f***, the boys were asking, how did your kids die? And I said the flu. And especially when you think about, like, the time frame of when these people died in this house, or in this area, back then people would die of the flu and disease. So the responses are pretty valid. And I know we got a lot of people saying, oh, these guys didn't use the, the headband, but you gotta remember, it was pitch black. Whoever was using the headphones in the first two rooms, we had the lights completely off, so we couldn't see anything anyway. Even the people who were asking the questions couldn't see shit. So it wasn't that different from having a blindfold on. So now that you know how the spirit box works and how this method works, let's watch. Is there anyone here? Have we told Nara to just to say shit? Do you feel me? Oh, no way. Yes, we can feel you. Yes. Has your family lived here long? I, I, I'm telling you, when that happened, like, I was shitting my pants. This entire time I'm sitting in this library, I'm shitting my pants. 
I don't want to be doing this. But at the same time, I do because I'm curious and because I talk so much shit about horror being fake most of the time and these videos that I react to on the TikToks and all that shit being fake all the time. I feel like I gotta put myself in the situation to see if shit like this is real. And what better way to do it than to do it yourself? But muchachos, I was shitting my pants. Uh, anyway, okay. 5.30. A.M. or P- Oh, oh what the fuck? What the f Oh! 5.30. What at 5.30? He said 5.30. I just got chewed. He said 5.30 and then the EMF went off, the juicy show in, in his hand. Now remember, it's pitch black, so all we can see are actually the lights from the EMF and the one from the motion sensor that's on the floor. But I have a theory in this 5.30 thing because at first we thought he was talking about a time, like 5.30 a.m. or p.m., but after showing this to Gabby, she, she kind of said something that had me go back and look at the raw footage, which it's pretty crazy, but I'll show you in a little bit. What will happen at 5.30? It's not what will happen at 5.30. <laughs> what the f was that? Sorry, I just knocked it. Holy f man. It's what will happen in five minutes and 30 seconds. That's what we didn't think about, but Gabby has this theory, but let's keep watching for a second. I'll explain. What is your name? Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's whoa, 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 hold up. That's weird we because they ordered pizza. pizza. Emma, and, Emma and Adri ordered pizza. That's very strange. That is f***ing weird. That is really weird. Should we check on the pizza? What if it just got here or it's about to get here? Is the pizza almost here? <laughs> You know what's funny is that everybody was laughing at this question, but I was actually being serious. I wasn't trying to be funny. I would genuinely wanted to ask. I felt like, okay, if we're talking to a f***ing spirit here, I'm jumping in all the way. I'm, I'm not like gonna ask some serious question like, I wanna follow up. Is the pizza almost here? Like I was being serious. I wasn't trying to be funny and I wasn't trying to make people laugh. It came out pretty funny, but I was curious, genuinely. Do you guys have your pizza? Coming, coming. How far away is it? You want to bring the guy in? No, the spirit box said pizza. Oh yeah, so. Look at Adri's face. It said pizza. Three minutes away. Three minutes away. Oh. It's three minutes away. The pizza. Okay, so Gabby's theory was that from the time the ghost said 5:30 to the time that the pizza guy got there, her theory was that that was why he said five, like the pizza was gonna be here in five minutes and 30 seconds. So I went back and looked at the footage and this is what I found. Okay, so this is the raw footage and this sounds a little weird because the labs aren't on the, the, our microphones aren't on here. It's the microphone from the camera. 5.30. Okay, he just said 5.30 at second 339 so if you add five minutes and 30 seconds that would put us at around 9 10 what happens before that what happens at 9 10 pizza <laughs> <laughs> no that's whoa, weird whoa, whoa, hold up. that's weird because they ordered pizza, pizza. Wait. Wait. ever and, ever and adri ordered pizza that's very yeah. strange that is Wait. weird that is really so at around 9.10 is when we all figured out that the pizza was almost here. So I wonder if the 5.30 was a countdown to us, to, like the amount of time we were going to be talking with him because that's too much of a coincidence. Or maybe I'm just looking for shit. So it wasn't exactly Gabby what Gabby said happened because that would have instead have been eight minutes and 30 seconds. But five minutes and 30 seconds is when we started to get up to go ask about the pizza. So, hmm. Let me know what you guys think on that. It might not be anything. I might just be looking too far into it, but it's just me trying to like run all the options through, trying to debunk shit. But it's hard to when things are very coincidental here. Like too many things are lining up too perfectly. So, okay, so Josh so went to go check on the pizza. And for everyone else who keeps saying that this is somehow fake or anything like that. Look at this. So Josh leaves. In the main video, we get the perspective of Josh going to talk to Adri and Emma, but listen to this. They ordered pizza. What? Emma and Adri ordered pizza, and it was supposed to get here any minute. It's not even a joke. Right before we came in here, they checked to see if it was here. Is it here? 
Bro, if the pizza guy's here, I'm gonna freak the f out. Is he here? Like, narrator had no idea. Look, look at look at him, like, trying to figure out what's going on. He's so confused as to why we're talking about pizza. It's three minutes away. The pizza is three minutes away. Yeah, three minutes out lives and That's Friday. so bizarre. So, there you go. Not a fake reaction from anyone. We all really didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. Especially me. Because <laughs> shit's about to get pretty personal for me, bro. <laughs> all right, back to the main video. Did you die here? On this property? Eddie! What? Bullshit. Oh, I'm getting chills, man. Oh, uh, turn the f <laughs> <laughs> oh! What was that? What the f was turn that? Turn the f light on! Was that you, motherfucker? <laughs> no. I knew you were gonna blame me for that. That wasn't me. I was Why the so. Would you do that, man? I was so scared that my name got called, muchachos. Like, I was just about to say, turn the fucking lights on. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I, this isn't happening. They did not just say my fucking name, and I don't want to talk to it. I don't want to fucking talk to it. My voice just cracked. No, I don't want to talk to it. I don't want to know. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I, I was shitting my pants and then Molly throws a fucking book and remember it's pitch black I gotta keep saying that because people in the comments are like, oh, they could see it and this night like they could look at look at their eyes They're clearly seeing things like motherfucker. My eyes are so wide Because they can't see anything. My pupils are so dilated. Also. No, I'm not mad at Molly <laughs> I was genuinely shitting my pants and the book sent me we're trying to do it seriously you have no idea how that felt man you have no fucking clue how that felt no i'll, 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 I'll tell you guys i'll tell you guys how it felt like you're, you're pitch black in a room and it didn't feel like we were talking to narrator remember by this point we've gotten so much clear responses from this thing whatever we're talking to that it was very evident to me that we weren't talking to narrator that there was something else there in the room with us and you could feel its presence like there was something in the f***ing room and I, I i just felt it like right there so when he says eddie it did not feel like narrator was talking to me i got this overwhelming i'm getting chills just thinking about it and talking about it i got this overwhelming sense of dread like my survival instincts have never like kicked in like that i felt like something was about to happen to me and i was so scared but it, it was pretty funny that molly interrupted and i'm kind of glad he did because i don't know what would have happened if he didn't like i may have turned the lights on i may not have had the courage to continue and i think the comedic relief from molly as much as you guys were like oh he interrupted the moment I, it actually helped me a lot that everybody was laughing because it changed the energy again and I had the courage to stay there and ask questions like, what do you want from me? And what do you want to tell me? And this and that. So I'm glad Molly threw the book and I'm glad everybody laughed, but let's keep going. <laughs> God damn it, dude. <laughs> oh God, you so good, bro. Holy f that was funny, man. <laughs> you're going back in the closet. You're, you're going back in the f***ing closet. You're about to be 100% better if you don't stop f***ing around. <laughs> All right, here we go. Why did you mention Eddie? Love. <gasps> He's a fan. <laughs> Subscriber. I instantly feel at peace now, thank you. Is there something you want to say to me? I, I think when Josh asked that question and I got the word love, I don't know why but I, I, I almost felt like crying. And just thinking about that feeling, it makes me want to cry right now. I don't know why, man. I don't know why. It's It was, I guess like uh, the best way I can describe it is it felt like that presence that was in the room became clearer what it was. And to me, it felt like a mother. And when she said love, I felt that love. Like, and I think that's what, that's why I felt like crying. I, I, I. I felt that love and the scary, the big scary feeling that I got turned into this overwhelming sense of 
like happiness and then pain like happiness to know that i was safe but i could feel the pain of what she was feeling because of what happened next but i i don't know i don't know how else to describe that it really felt like a motherly presence that had passed and i felt really f***ing sad like i've never felt so overwhelmed in my life like i did right then see there i go and i guess at that moment i knew that this shit wasn't a joke like this was real like i could feel whatever the f was there even though i couldn't see it we could definitely f hear it but I, I knew there was something there i felt it and and i don't care what anyone says that's what it was all right let's move on okay so i, I switched back to the raw here. footage here thank you this is after Maybe. narrator said love because this obviously wasn't in the video either, but this circles back to the popcorn that I left as an offering. Is there something you want to Is say? Is there something to you want to say to me? Did you like the popcorn I left? <laughs> Did you like the popcorn I left? <laughs> <laughs> See that that's that wasn't included in the video because they didn't include the popcorn part. The editors did. I in my head, I was trying to figure out why the f this entity was loving on me, and the first thing I could think of was, "Did you like the popcorn I left?" Like, is that <laughs> I thought they were loving on me because I left popcorn. So to me, it wasn't a coincidence that they had called out my name. I felt it was because I showed some sort of act of kind, a genuine act of kindness where I wasn't trying to play around and I actually left something there with the genuine intent of doing something nice for the spirits. <laughs> anyway, and ended up getting cut from the main video, but I wanted to show you all that because that was, uh, th I think that adds a little bit more context as to uh, what was happening there. And now. I get the headphones. Maxed five times. Really? It hasn't gone off the whole time. It's it's wow. literally okay. it's literally maxing. We've heard that there's someone named Henry in here. Whoa! I took him off. What? I swear I just heard Molly's voice, like his channel. I didn't say. Anything. I shit you not. So that was weird. When I first put the headphones on, I was trying to. I was trying to figure out, decipher what the words being said was, and for like a split second, I could hear one of Molly's videos being played through the headphones. And I could hear his voice. Like it was clear, vivid. It was almost like a like I was watching one of his like react videos or something. And when I put the headphones on, this thing was going crazy in Juicy's hand. And the cat ball over here on the right goes off. So we were getting like some activity. And when I had the headphones on, when I put them on, man. I, I don't know, that 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 presence of love that I had before turned into fear again. Like, I didn't want to open myself up as some sort of channel, but I had no other choice when I put the headphones on and I'm repeating the stuff that I'm hearing, right? Like, I was terrified, like, even more than I was before when I had the headphones on because I felt like that presence became bigger. And seeing the lights go off around me, I freaked out even more because I was getting a lot more activity. It was almost like a confirmation that I was supposed to have the headphones on. My EMF is going crazy. Really? It just stopped. Yeah, it just maxed five times. Really? It hasn't gone off the whole time. It's it's literally yeah, see? it's literally and the cat balls moving and four. Is that the word four or the number four? You told us to look at something. Is there something four. in here that's that's for us? Is there something with the letter or the number four on it you want us to look at? Love so much. For love so much. You guys said in the comments that um, you've watched other videos. I don't know if it was the Sam and Colby video or um, you've seen other videos and whatever they spoke with in those videos mentioned a lady that had four kids and three of them died i could be wrong but i i i'm just trying to remember the comments off the top of my head but that makes more sense because later on in the room above three of the kids are mentioned the number three are those your children four children i love so much mm -hmm. my emf just Whoa. maxed understand Whoa. so this right here is wild to me because I'm just saying random words I don't I don't hear what they're asking but after seeing the video 
and seeing that they the, the boys deciphered that they were four kids that she loved so much as soon as he says that the emf reader goes to five and i say understand like confirming that josh just understood what i was saying or what she was saying at this point all of this is a blur i don't actually remember saying a lot of these things i just remember the flu and pain <clears throat> whoa your emf is going fucking crazy all right keep it going so you have four children that you love very much turn the lights on Bullshit. That's what it said. We don't have to That's do that. That's what it said. Are you sitting with That's me? what it f***ing said. Turn the lights on. on. It, it disappeared. The EMF stopped working. When I hear turn the lights on in my head, I'm not just repeating it to like repeat what I just said. Like I'm repeating it because I, I actually wanted them to turn the lights on because I felt like it was an aggressive turn the lights on. Like it was a, they, they were getting like more and more aggressive in the way the voices sounded. Did you lose your kids? Is that why you're in pain? The flu. The flu. Is that what That's the answer. Is that yes. what killed him? Probably. Do you miss your children? After losing them to the flu? Yeah. Um, Trust. Trust. Whoa. Uh, AMF is gone. What? The f I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that shit. Like Cause you're not, you're not even touching I'm it. I'm getting crazy feeling whenever it does that. Really? Yeah. You can actually yeah. feel it. Like I literally felt like someone was sitting on my shoulders. The I first took my headphones off to listen because I didn't want to be in there. Like, uh, uh, it, it didn't feel right. Like it, it felt <laughs> up just like knowing that something was trying to speak through me and shit. Like it was, it was weird, man. There's the lights on that you wanted. Yep, you told us to turn the lights on, the lights are on. Good idea. The moment Eddie said turn the lights on, I literally felt like someone was sitting on my shoulder. Bumps this, dude, I feel drained right now. Like, I feel absolutely fucking drained. There was- Hey, you can actually see it in my eyes. I don't know if my eyes looked like that before, but um, I can only explain the feeling of being drained that I got as the feeling you get immediately after you throw up. You have like that, lightheadedness and you feel like you just want to lay down for a second your body feels weak i'm telling you if we go just by what i was feeling this shit ain't right like it, it wasn't normal for me to number one shit blood number two have this overwhelming sense of like fear and happiness and sadness that i've never felt before in my life like i had like i was the one who lost the kids like i could feel the mom's pain who lost the kids to the flu and it drained the absolute f out of me, like within the 20 minutes that I had the headphones on for. I had to eat some fucking pizza, bro. <laughs> Actually, I think Adri said that they brought the pizza guy in and I felt bad that they did because like that guy just went into the conjuring house. <laughs> like, <laughs> he must have like pulled up and been like, oh boy. F <laughs> I feel like it I felt took like energy I, out of you to I speak like through. It took it took shit out of me, like for real. Like I'm being dead serious. I feel like I could fall asleep for days right now. Yeah, that's not you a joke. You say we take it upstairs. Yep. Henry's, Henry's room. I didn't want to do it, bro. <laughs> I was like, man, come on. So yeah, later on I explained I like it to Adrian and Emma. I felt like crying. Like emo no. I felt so emotional, right? Is that why you're crying now? Is that why you? Yeah, I, I really like. I feel like, for some fucking reason, like I really want to cry. Oh. And then they gave me the headphones. So I, I don't know. I, it's, I was very emotional right after that, man. And it wasn't like, I wasn't like feeling scared or anything. Like I just felt overwhelmingly sad. Like, like I had just lost something or someone. Like it was weird. And I was trying to reject it with all my body because it it wasn't my like like it wasn't my feelings you know what i mean like it was it was weird it was like i, I don't know how the f to explain it. it it was it was very overwhelming and anytime i think about it for some reason it actually makes me sad again but nothing happened to me it was just the thought of what i don't know man i i don't f know it's definitely a moment i'll never forget look at this fucking gremlin <laughs> So I don't have much behind the scenes to say about Henry's room other than the full on conversations like the, I feel like the conversations in Henry's room were a lot more direct. And the thing I'll say is that when we opened the closet, when Henry was talking about the baseball, is there a baseball in here? 
When when Henry when Henry mentioned the baseball and we all started looking for the baseball, I remember like it being such a big fucking a coincidence of, like, tables and shit. that we awesome. found the Red Sox memorabilia. Oh, he's a baseball fan. Bro, Maybe. What, what are the odds of this of a fucking giant baseball merchandise fucking just in there? It's like a duvet cover. Like, I could dig through the footage, the, the raw footage right now, but I, I'll just tell you what happened. I, I remember it vividly. Josh pulls this thing out of the closet, which none of us knew was in the closet, by the way. And when he pulls out this Red Sox memorabilia after Henry mentioning the baseball, Mully goes, Bro, do you realize how fake this looks? It looks so fake. Like it looks so staged. Like we planted that there. Like it, it, I remember Molly saying before, like it was his first reaction. Like, bro, this looks so fucking staged, but it wasn't. Like, what are the fucking odds? It almost felt like there was a story being told, right? Like we got the story from the mother, and then we got the story from Henry. Which, by the way, Henry's whoever we were talking to, he kept saying, "Don't take my stuff. Don't touch me. Don't do like." When he was saying that shit, man, the only thing I remember thinking to myself, like, what if this energy or the spirit we're talking to, it's just recalling trauma. Like, what happened to this kid, bro? Like, that's the scary thing to think about is what the f*** happened? Because they were just, it was like someone was recalling something that happened to them. And then afterwards, the mother, he called, he said, the mother or she's here or something like that. And like, I remember the light going off on the side and the other room went off, like something had just come upstairs with us. And and then the mother took over at some point and said to turn the lights back on. There's the part where Josh, when Josh had the headphones on later, he says nine people and we figure out that they were talking about nine of us. There was nine of us in that room. When Josh took off his headphones, he couldn't believe that we were talking, that, that he had, he, he thought it was just gibberish. And then he counted and even he was surprised that that was what was being said. It almost felt like the stories checked out, like there was something there. They mentioned the mother coming from the floor above, coming upstairs. And the mother just kept telling us to turn on the lights and said, I'm not going to tell you again, or don't make me repeat myself or something like that. And we turned on the lights and we got the f out of there. But Henry's room was, it definitely felt like something different was there. It didn't feel like the library. It felt different. It felt a little more innocent, but at the same time, more creepy. I don't know how to describe it, but let's jump to the basement because that one, I've got some more behind the scenes footage to show y'all from that because that one was, the basement is in my opinion, like whatever we spoke to upstairs, was not the same thing as what we spoke to downstairs. Downstairs felt more oppressive. It felt more powerful. Like it was more evident that there was something there that was trying to mess with us. And it almost didn't feel human. But let's watch. So for context, um, this hall right She's here. Going all the way to the end. Good this hall right here that Emma walks down to and turns to the right ends with a door and that door is actually nailed shut. I had seen a video from a long time ago where the people exploring the conjuring house were able to use that door to go outside. For some reason, that door was inaccessible this time. And the spirit downstairs mentioned that the door was locked. Like he couldn't get out anymore or something. I don't know what, like why that was mentioned that way, but it, it was, the door was shut. So here we are downstairs. This box behind me, actually has a lot of drawings on the inside of it. And according to the tour guide, he said the house was at one point a daycare and that box is left over from when the house was a daycare and it still has some of the drawings from the kids. And on the inside is the drawing of it's, 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 it's the, your typical, like, creepy-ass drawing from a little kid in a scary movie when they're, like, drawing the entity that's in the house, pretty much. They drew a lady with a dress, and it's just, like, all penciled, just, like, black shadow drawing of a lady in a dress, but her neck it's like this, it's like a broken neck to the side, like, almost at a 90-degree angle. And the guy said that 
down the hall, you can sometimes see the, the crooked neck lady. And he was very specific and said it was not the same entity from the second Conjuring movie, which took place in a different house. So it's not the crooked man from the second Conjuring movie. Apparently the kids would report seeing a crooked neck lady down in the basement. And some investigators have also claimed to have seen that entity as well. Later on, we heard a beep from the motion sensor and the motion sensor was right behind that window on the outside on the in the hall. So whatever was standing out there, I don't want to know what the f it was, but something triggered the motion sensor. You guys can watch the main video to see all the spooky conversations we were having here, but I, I, I want to show you all some behind the scenes stuff. So this is this is footage from all of us just exploring the basement before we sat down at the table. And we're all down in the basement by this point. There's this weird room with uh, like Halloween costumes and decorations and stuff. But you can kind of hear it. There's this weird noise that happens and it's coming from above around this part. Did you guys hear that? Right here. You can almost hear like something go, ooh, and we react to it at the same time, like right, right there. We all heard it at the same time and looked that way, like towards the top. And I thought it was coming from the guy who also lives there, but we were on another side of the house, like away from the part where he was sleeping at. It was also like 3 a.m. at this point. Remember the guy lives like right up here. Yeah. And he lives like, he lives over there. He doesn't live above right Mo here. Yeah, no. He lives on an extension. Yeah, there's the merch store and then there's another thing. Yeah. yeah he's like way over there. So that was weird. Uh, we also heard noises like almost like the floors creaking above us while we were all downstairs. And it was after the camera had died. But yeah, there was a lot of weird activity going on in the basement. Uh, first of all, I don't know if anyone's pointed out, but there was a well right there. It's a 15-foot well. Right yeah, there. that well is and creepy, man. They get all the water on the property. The well was terrifying, dude. After watching the ring, I'm just waiting for something to crawl out of that. You know, with like the hair strung like... The guy said that the well was actually like usable. I mean, that's how they get their fresh water. But the fact that it's right there in the basement while all this creepy shit is going on, it just added to the creepy factor, but we were so focused on the conversations with the spirits and what was happening that uh, we completely forgot about the well after a while. Back door. The back door that's nailed shut. Split up and have someone go to the back door. Do you want someone to go to the back door? That is out. That is out. Okay, so don't go back there. No, like, that leads oh, like to that the outside. <laughs> Josh was about to go back there, man. Like... It was off. Sorry. Yeah, that was, going, that was going nuts, too. Josh was about to go back there, and I think he, I think he chickened out. <laughs> Are you saying... I'm showing you guys behind-the-scenes stuff again, like the raw footage, rather than uh, just going through the main video and reacting. Let's go to the scratching noises, because this was the part that was, like, so creepy for us. What happened to your family, Lucky? Raging. Whoa. See that 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 was not made up either. Like that's raw footage right there. The lights hadn't flickered until that point. This shit stopped being coincidence. Like after the fucking cat ball in the kitchen. Here's the scratching noises, and you can tell something's back there. Because me and Josh react at the same time. Years. See? Yeah. Yep. And then the lights flicker. Again. Is that again. you, Lucky? What the fuck is going on? I just heard something crazy. It's just like so much activity happening at the same time. See, Molly's concentrating, and he like can't hear anything we're saying. Remember that. I think we should get out of here. No, 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 no. It's a lot. See, I was like, I think we should get out of here. Like this. Yeah. I mean, he's a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah. Plus, he's making his presence known, so that yeah, feels thicker down here. Mm. Did you heard that? See, we yeah, heard it. We heard it that? again. Lucky, is that you? Is that a snake? No, there might be like an animal or something. There's like There's scratching. Something, going. It's like, like a rat. full on moving behind us. 
Lucky, is that you? Touch my foot. At first, I thought that it was an animal scratching under the floorboards, but then I realized there are no floorboards. This thing is fucking stone. It's all stone. There's nothing scratching at the stone. Yeah, like Lucky was trying to get out, man, and that's scary as really? shit. It was like taps on my shoes, though. Like that's See, and Juicy's talking about feeling like something in his shoe as like well. Up against my whole foot. I just feel like it's the top of my leg here. I'm under. Oh. You're under? Are you under the table? I remember the chills running down my spine there, like... No, he's probably buried under. Yeah. Hell. Under this rock. Under where, Lucky? Open. No. We're not gonna no. do that. <laughs> the center. Bruh. <laughs> I am not f enjoying myself anymore. <laughs> He's Watch it. He's buried. See, Molly's like Molly is reacting to what he's seeing because he doesn't know what we're reacting to or why we look so scared. And if you would have seen Adri and Emma's faces when he said I'm under, Adri was about to start crying. And so Molly sees their reactions. <laughs> he's like pointing out to them, but he doesn't know why. He doesn't realize that he's saying these things reacting to us reacting to noises coming from below anyway so this is uh footage from when the camera the main camera died and y'all saw this y'all only saw the segment of when like kevin and Doze were messing with the camera we, we we thought we had lost the footage the camera said we had lost the footage and man kevin was a devastated you can kind of see it here like look at him like man the guy was so stressed and this is like Molly talking about everything he's hearing inside of the inside of the spirit box but he had I was like man wait until we get upstairs let's talk about it in the kitchen wait so how much what, how much footage are we talking about here yeah the whole night yeah. so this is us trying to deliberate like how much footage was lost like look at poor Kevin back there man he is so upset this is those trying to recover the footage I want y'all to see how real this was, man, because this moment was stressful, but also look at the fucking table. Right now, it's like 4 a.m. We have been here all night. That table is a sign of us being there all night. Pizza, chips, and water. Yeah, see, look, he's like praying. He's like, man, come on. And then we figured out that the footage was saved. <laughs> man, I, I just it's a very stressful moment for everybody, thinking the footage was lost. I'm glad it wasn't, but... I. Lucky said he would fix it, and I guess he f***ing did. So this is literally just 23 minutes of us debriefing of what happened down in the basement just then. And then the lights went. And then we remember, yeah. like, the war that happened here? Like, they, like they were talking Look at about Kevin back there, there, man. He's... <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> I hadn't seen this footage. I hadn't seen, like, yeah. look at him. Man's really cares about what he does, man. I'm glad we didn't lose the footage. Okay, so this is the last part of the raw footage that I have. The last part of the video. Um, we're setting up for Adri to put on the headphones and narrator is trying to walk her through what she's she's never used this before She doesn't know what she's listening for so narrator is trying to show her what it sounds like in there so that she can uh, Understand what it is that we're doing and what she's supposed to be doing and meanwhile Josh and Juicy are coming back from upstairs Watch what happens when Josh enters the room Prepare yourself so This is Adri putting on the headphones and just testing it out, making sure everything works. She's vibing to the. <laughs> oh! And just like that, you walk in and shut it off. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> and then it wouldn't turn back on, man. Yeah. So that was pretty random and hectic. Like he steps into the room and the light turns off. Out of nowhere, it had flickered before when we were talking to Lucky, but it hadn't fully turned off like that. So that was pretty scary. And before you say like, why wasn't these things included in the video? Because they're, uh, it doesn't really go anywhere. It was just random bits. We were still setting up. Um, the video overall has to tell some sort of cohesive story. So there's obviously a lot of moments that 
don't make it into the final cut and you can still have a fantastic video. I'm very proud of the video that we put out. It's one of my favorite videos we've ever done because it just highlights and tell it tells this whole story that we didn't even like craft this story. It was a story that was told by the entities there. Like we didn't go in there with a plan of what we were going to do. We kind of figured that out after the tour. We said, okay, we're, just, we're let's let's just do a tour of the house first, and then let's uh, let's hit these hot spots and see what happens. Let's do the basement at the end. You know, like that was the original plan, but it slowly turned into an actual story being told. And I'm so fucking proud of this video. And of course, the moment that made me like go from skeptic to full on like this is no coincidence anymore is the moment that Adri takes off the rosary that she's wearing. And I want to show it to you through the raw footage so that you can see that we weren't bullshitting. This is her putting on the headphones for the first time. It's 8:50 on the time code. So she puts on the headphones. Her fuck, still here. And we Lucky, start asking questions and we're getting nothing. She's not saying a single thing. It's been one minute. Kevin's checking the hallway outside. Did you get that, Kevin? I think so. Are you is there? Lucky? Lucky, is that you? We heard the motion sensor outside. That's when we heard the motion sensor outside. Oh, so we're asking the questions, but the only thing reacting are the devices are around us. Not Adri. It's okay if you are. Because he can't speak through her. Because she's wearing the f***ing rosary, man. Alright, we're now at minute 11.30. Time code 11.30. Did he say that or what did you just say? She just no. said, I can't get, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> no, I don't think. Let's go to minute 12.30. Still hasn't said anything. 12.37. Yeah, if you're really here, it, turn off this light. Do your best. I think you can do it. <laughs> We're trying to get something to happen. It goes on and on. He's, He's trying. He's trying to freaking talk. He's trying to talk. Take your neck place off. Hmm? Take so, your neck place 10 off. minutes. A full 10 like minutes. You're joking, right? No. Well, we don't, he can, he's he a full 10 minutes after she puts on the headphones, we ask her to take the rosary off. You're trying to make contact with the spirit, and you're wearing stuff that's specifically meant to warn the away off. From you. Right? I remember she, she, man, she was so I was scared. Put it in the wall, well. And your um, bracelet. Yeah. She was originally not gonna oh, stay the whole night there with us. TSA for spirits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please place all our yeah. spiritual warning. Please place no, all your talking. crystals. Like, on my Raw footage. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are back in the basement. Can you Please dig me up. <laughs> Table starts floating. Yeah. Finally. No. Oh. Are you capping? What the. F Look at her face. She's not capping. <laughs> You're kidding. Lucky. Oh. Lucky. Welcome back. Can you talk to us? <laughs> what the? F There's Shit. no way. Shut the f up. No way. Is that better, Lucky? That was the moment that I, I've already said it, man. I I will not forget that moment. That moment was impactful. That was impactful. That was no bullshit. I felt it too. When she said finally and dropped her jaw, I felt, man, it felt f***ed up. It was like, I don't know how to describe it. It was like instant, like my weight multiplied, like, like that's how it felt. Like gravity just got like stronger on me, on everyone. It just it like, it felt like I was being pushed down. The air got heavy and Whatever was speaking now was probably not human, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys context uh, and and hopefully give you more insight on what I particularly went through that night and how it affected me. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, the rest of the video you can you can watch the whole thing on the boys' channel, but. The rest of the video uh, is pretty self-explanatory. What we couldn't figure out was that we went down into the basement. The second time we went down into the basement. Hello? Who? Ah. Uh. What? I just... <laughs> My wife, everybody! Waifu Gabby! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Wait, it's corn, it's, uh, uh, there's chicken, there's, uh... There's squash, squa there's queso fresco, Valentina, cilantro. Valentina sauce. Thank you. You're welcome.
<laughs> I thought you were gonna punch me in the now I was trying to give you a fist bump, dog. Okay, I gotta end this video, muchachos. I just got dinner. But yeah, what I was saying is I, when we went down the second time, I vividly remember it was around 4.30 and it felt like we were down there for 15 minutes and all of a sudden it was time to end the video. Like it, it was so fast. Like time was weird in that place. Other creepy things that happened that night while we were debriefing in the kitchen, sometimes you could hear someone like tapping on the window. That was creepy. The bathroom felt especially f***ing creepy because you had two sinks on both sides. You had a mirror over here and a mirror over here. So when you would go wash your hands, you looked through the mirror and you could see the mirror behind you so it created like this infinite portal of mirrors and uh it felt like something was there anyway i can't tell you how happy i was when it was finally 6 a.m and we got daybreak so 6 a.m comes comes up and we end the video and we have to immediately pack to leave because we check out at 8 a.m so we have to be out of the house by 8 a.m because there's other there's another tour happening at 8 a.m so we have to be out of there. And I remember we did not plan this out right because our hotel was in Boston, two and a half hours away from where we were at. And we weren't able to check into that hotel until 4 p.m. So we started driving at 8 <laughs> after we had been awake all night. And I remember we stopped at Starbucks to get coffee. And immediately after Starbucks, I was driving because I felt the most awake. Everybody was asleep. We had a van full of seven people. So all the boys were asleep and I was driving. My co-pilot was Mully and he was falling asleep. And then I felt that I started dozing off. I'm like, nah, man, I got to pull over. This ain't right. Like we were only 30 minutes into the drive, awake all night. I wasn't gonna pull through and I wasn't gonna put everyone in danger. So everybody was asleep. They all trusted in me. So what I did was I pulled over at this park and I parked there and there was uh, people at the park. <laughs> I think it was a Wednesday morning. So it's a weekday and I remember parking the van and I fell asleep. I was trying to fall asleep. I think we slept for a total of an hour or two hours enough to recharge. But I remember waking up and seeing people passing by in the sidewalk, looking over towards us, looking confused. And there was people at the park that looked so confused. I mean, who wouldn't be confused when it's a weekday morning and there's a van full of seven adults asleep at a park? <laughs> that was the creepiest part of the trip. <laughs> anyway, we ended up getting to the Airbnb uh, early and safely, most importantly, and they let us in. They let us check in early, but I made my peace uh, before I left. I made sure that I set the intention for nothing to follow me and I felt at peace other than a few nightmares I've had. I don't really feel like I have any lingering effects from that place. It's just a scary memory that I have now. Um, I did have a nightmare of me being in the basement again and the floor crumbling from underneath me and me falling into the space underground where the well is in the space where Lucky wanted us to get him out from. Like, I remember having a vivid nightmare where I fell into that place and I felt so scared. But, I mean, other than that, I'm okay. I'm glad to be back. Holy shit, I've been recording for two and a half hours. Ollie's gonna kill me. Sorry, Ollie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long this video is gonna be. Sorry for the long ass explanation and the long ass video. But thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Let me know down in the comments what I've been missing out on, what you want to see me play. High on Life DLC came out. Uh, if y'all are interested, let me know down in the comments. Leave a like. I love y'all. And I'm gonna see you next time. Bye.